Because a lot of times as we do this, do like do movements in our joints, we tend to move in our most mobile places. And sometimes it's hard to even recognize that we're doing that. And I was thinking about how this is like a physical way that we collapse on ourselves, but then there's also so many mental and internal ways we collapse on ourselves. I'm taking this trauma-informed training. And we talked a lot about how people like to double down. So it's like, we're feeling mad about something and then we realize we're mad and then we're mad that we're mad. <laughs> we're feeling sad about something. And then we're like, why am I sad? Like I'm always sad and then we're more sad that we're sad. Or we're shaming ourselves about something and then we're like shaming or shaming ourselves about those things. So I want us to focus on, my invitation is to focus on building this awareness or mindfulness to notice when we're doing that. And just starting with this mindfulness. So we're going to do that in our body. So recognizing like, oh, when I lift my shoulder up to a certain point, my ribs go up. Or then I just look up with my head. And being able to also bring that same awareness internally, tracking what's happening internally, and just beginning to recognize this process. So if we can be aware and not double down, that will like, Cut back like fifty percent of that shit, right? So awareness, so important. Coming up to a seated posture, letting your eyes settle. Letting this be a gradual transition to your meditation. Other ways we collapse on ourself is pressure. We expect it to look a certain way. We pressure ourselves to show up in certain ways and all this internal pressure is so much. Becoming the observer of yourself, kind of like you're watching a movie about what's happening in this moment. When we watch a movie, we're much more detached. We don't take everything quite so personally. Noticing the thoughts that you're thinking. The emotions you might be feeling. the physical <coughs> sensations you're feeling. <coughs> you hear the dog barking, and it's just a constant reminder that life just happens. And you might notice yesterday in class, we were working about internally tracking. Everything that happens outside of us has an internal response, a physical internal response. So like, where can we feel inside my little dog barking at my neighbors? And I think the antidote to this internal pressure, to this internal doubling down is curiosity, inquiry. So instead of like, oh, I'm noticing I'm like really anxious in this moment, or I'm noticing that I'm feeling jealous, 
adding on to that, isn't that interesting? I wonder why that is, because that helps you become more of the observer of what's happening. Draw your hands up to your heart. Send yourself some self-compassion. If that feels hard to do in this moment, imagine you're sending some compassion to someone you love so much. And then send that compassion to yourself. Great. Bringing your hands onto your chest if it's not over there. All right there. So one hand and then the other pushing into your skin and then go up and down. So you can feel the skin kind of glide over your sternum. And we're gonna keep the slide down and then draw your chin towards your chest. And then rock your right ear over towards your right shoulder. And making this practice your own. So instead of just coming over here, head to shoulder, a little bit of micro movement until you register internally like yum that's the stretch work your hands a little bit more to the left so they're underneath your left collarbone push down into the skin under your left collarbone and pull down adding a little bit more traction down away from the left ear and then do little like half circles over by your right shoulder And begin to turn your head so your chin's looking over your right shoulder. Keep pulling down by the left collarbone, maybe even work out a little bit more towards the head of the left arm bone. And then rolling the chin back towards center, bring the hands back to the center of the heart, drag down. And then left ear comes over to the left shoulder. You might be registering the difference between the sides and you can bring in inquiry again. That's interesting. And your little micro movements, more bigger movements. Work your hands a little bit more towards the right, tractioning down the skin that's attached up to the side of the right head, exaggerating that stretch. And look over your right shoulder, left shoulder, chin over shoulder. Now let's come back to those little half circles. And without changing anything here, just notice the position of your rib cage. Notice if your ribs are sticking more out or if you're kind of slouched in your back. Nice, bring your chin back down towards the center. Take your hands behind your head. Put pressure with your hands going down and then push your head up into your hands. Don't let yourself move. So you're in your own resistance. Keeping the resistance of the hands, let your head overpower and bring your head upright until the back of your head is directly above your sacrum. Keep, now make the hands resistant, keep pushing the head back. And notice if the ribs pop back, try to keep them in. Awesome, release the hands down. Let's switch the cross of our legs. We'll do this nerve floss, dropping your right ear over <laughs> to your right shoulder, stretch your left arm out towards the side, flex your palm back. And keep your shoulder back. You can even put your hand on your shoulder as a reminder. Remember, doorknob, shoulder forward, head of the arm bone back, little pocket in the shoulder. Okay, ribs in, and then begin to scrub. So going up and down until the hand comes all the way down towards the ground. And then you'll start again. You can go back up. You can play with taking your hand more behind you. Or you can take your hand a little bit more in front of you, finding those interesting spots. Lots of nerves intervate here through the front of the chest and then our tight 
muscles squeeze them and there's not that sliding and gliding. Okay, come back up. Lift your head up for a moment and then we're gonna turn the palm backwards so the hand is still flexed, but now the hand's flexing towards the wall behind you. Same thing, head knocks over, scrub. We have three nerves here, your radial nerve, your ulna nerve, and your medial nerve. With a different position in your hands, gonna stretch a different one. You might just find a spot that you wanna stay. Experiment with pulling your fingers back more towards your wrist. One more time, reach the arm up. Reposition your head. Now we're gonna take the hand so the fingertips are pulling back down towards the floor. Head of the arm bone back, rib cage in, floss. Now let's do this, bring your head up right. You're going to bend your elbow a little bit. This is kind of like I'm a T-spout. Bend your elbow and then when your arm straightens, drop your head. Bend, shoulder back, straighten. Bend, straighten. Bend, straighten. Okay, bring your hands back to your knees, roll out your shoulders. Shoulders back, shoulders forward, kind of like some cat cow. Okay, second side, left ear to left shoulder, hand comes out like you're saying stop, bring it up to the sky, maybe right left hand comes onto right shoulder to keep it back, and floss. I like to close my eyes often when I do this so I can bring more of my awareness to the sensation of the stretch. And see if instead of letting the mind dictate your, dictate your movements, you're kind of giving your body the reins. Getting curious. If I move my arm a little bit, how does that change things? You can stay in one spot again, or you can just keep going up and down. Bring the head back up, stretch up. Now we're gonna rotate the hand backwards, thumbs, fingers pull back, head to the side, keep your shoulder back, scrub. The shoulders are often, sometimes people will, in pop culture, they assign like areas to mean things in your body. And shoulders have to do with your giving, how much you're giving or how much you're receiving. Notice if your head's coming forward a lot. Oh, we've got one more side, but the workout. Right. Palm goes down. Shoulder back, scrub. I'm bringing the head back through center. We're gonna do that bend and straighten. Elbow bends as the elbow straightens, head drops to opposite shoulder. Hands on your knees, pick your shoulders up, and we'll do some twists, core engage. If I did this without my core engaged, I'd be doing this twist at my most mobile place, so the core is going to protect me. Okay, great. We're going to come to table. We're going to start with some flossing. When we floss in the body, we engage the muscle and then we create movements. So we're going to come down onto our forearms. Notice if the ribs drop. Keep the core in, so back of the ribs pull up to the ceiling. Hands, elbows push into the floor, and then they try to drag back towards the back of your yoga mat. You could even let them slide back, feel that movement, and then do it again without letting yourself move. 
This is going to help engage through the lats and the serratus, the anterior muscles. Now drag your butt back with that resistance. It won't make it all the way. And then before you make it all the way, release, come back. Recreate the engagement and then add the movement. I like to come back on my inhale, engage and move with the resistance on my exhale. But you do not need to link any kind of breath with your movement. We'll practice feeling what comes up in the body. A nice two more. And coming back up to table, we're going to take the right hand across the mat, pinky side down, and we're going to be pulling at this diagonal. So again, we could do that just to find the movement. And then we're going to do it resisting. So this is going to help engage my triceps and again, that side body. Put your left hand over your right, keep pulling that core in, and then resist, drop the shoulder down towards the floor. Come back up, engage. No. You could aim your shoulder more towards your knee. Or you could work your shoulder more out to the side. All right, come back to center. Second side, left hand comes over the body. You can practice that diagonal pull. Add the right hand, engage, shoulder engages onto the back, and that pull with resistance. Creating our own resistance and then creating movement. These tight places that we find when we do this, these are often chronic held places of tension that can be connected to internal sweeps. When you feel internal states, that often creates a pattern in the body. It's like anger can show up in certain places in the body where you're just like, when you're angry, those muscles engage. I'm helping release those internal states. Okay, come back through center. Now we're going to do our cat cow. Keep a tone in your core to protect your spine. And then moving through your cat cow. You can keep it pretty forward and back, where you can add a little side to side shimmy as you do it. I'm going to seek out the hidden tight places. Maybe not so hidden. Really nice. Now pushing into the hands, tuck your toes, lift up your hips, down your facing back. In your down dog, bike out the knees. Try to keep your muscles engaged as you find the stretch. One way you can do that is by really pushing the toes and the ball of the foot down to the floor as you make that leg almost all the way straight. So you're firing the calf, little bend in the knees, so going up and back. And then we're gonna take this little walk, this little bite, and we're gonna start to walk the legs forward. So one knee will bend, other leg will straighten. And then when you switch and bend the next foot, next knee, step it forward a few inches. We'll start to make our way towards forward fold. When you can't do your bicycle anymore forward, just come straight in both legs and move your hands back. So your forward fold might be more in the middle of your mat than at the top of it. 
Put a little bend in your knees or a big enough bend that your spine feels like it's not getting asked too much right here. Rotate the head no. Maybe do a little circle. Circle in the other direction. Now inhale, take your hands to the top of your thighs. Extend this one forward. Draw the shoulders back, core in. Now look forward for a moment. The most mobile spot on the whole spine is where the A1 and A2, or C1 and C2, the atlases connect. So this looking forward is a big way that we collapse on ourselves. So try to keep the chin a little bit tucked so the cervical spine stays, I consider this straight, but it has that cervical curve. Okay, hands to your hips. From your hips, push into your feet, come on up. Okay, roll your shoulders back. About to do a little knee bounce. Okay, and then we're going to add this floss. I wanna show you what it looks like first. So I'm gonna take my feet just a little bit wide. I'm gonna interlace my hands behind my back. Elbows mostly straight, but if you hyperextend, little bend in the elbows. And then the resistance is gonna be I'm pulling my arms apart. I'm gonna keep pulling my arms apart, so don't follow me, watch this. And I'm gonna fold forward, pulling the arms back. The knees are bent, so I'm hinging at my hips, not my low back, so I don't look like this. Bend your knees as much as you need to, so you're hinging at your hips. And then while you fold the elbows back, you can kind of go side to side. Then we're gonna release the hands. We're gonna interlace the hands, palms out. And then same thing, arms try to pull away as you come up. Pull the hands to one side and push the ribs to the other side. One side, other side, one side, other side, one side, other side, all the way up. And then we'll do it again. So this is like a flossing version of half sun salutation. That's how I think of it. Okay, interlace your hands behind your back. Shoulders draw onto the back, core strong. Try to pull your arms apart, create that resistance. Notice if, scan your body awareness, is there a way that you might be collapsing on yourself or holding yourself down? Are you clenching your jaw? Are you doing some habit that you know you do? Now put a bend in your knees. Begin to rotate your pubic bone forward, sit bones back, ribs stay in, begin to fold. Keep pulling the hands apart. Yeah. Hands might stay more towards the butt or you can start to reach them more up towards the ceiling, but keep bringing, pulling the hands apart. Maybe the hands start to rotate more towards the front of the room. Keep trying to pull the hands apart. Wherever you are, try not to double down on yourself if this isn't looking the way you think it should look. Then release your hands. Interlace your hands so the palms are facing towards the ground. Try to pull the arms apart and begin to round up. Pause, pull both of your hands over to the right. Keep pulling your hands to the right, push your ribs to the left. Well, then take the hands to the left, pull the hands to the left, push your ribs to the right. Keep doing that as you come all the way up to standing. Maybe a little side effects. Side effects. <laughs> the side effects are the sounds. <laughs> when you come up, circle the arms down. The shoulder roll. Trying to really mobilize the scapulas because the scapulas like to get glued on our back and don't move. And then we collapse into different joints to compensate. enable the scapulas to compensate. <laughs> okay, again, interlace the hands behind the back. Shoulders back, pull the arms apart. Now notice your head, did it go forward? Think about that line. Ears, shoulders, okay. bend the knees, begin to fold. Nice and slow. Pull the arms apart. Widen through the shoulders. Release the hands, interlace. Side to side moves as you resist. Mm. 
Awesome. No rush, but when you get up, bring your hands back down. Okay, so that was our little warm up, and now we're going to look a little bit more closely at the shoulder joint. So I'm just on my knees so you guys can see better. So the shoulder does this action, right? But what we, we help it out often with our ribs. So when our arms go up, the ribs come forward, and it's like, wow, look how open my shoulders are. You see that in down dog, it looks like this, like, oh, such a big shoulder opener. It's like, no, that's no longer shoulder flexion. That's this thoracic lumbar junction flexion. So we're going to come over to a wall. So move yourself towards a wall, sit down at the wall. We're not going to be here very long. This is just a test. Very awesome. yes. okay. As you sit on the wall, pull your sit bones back to the wall. So your butt is pushing into the wall. As we, our focus is going to be the shoulders, but another thing you can bring awareness to is the way you scoop your bum under. Okay. Pull the flo floating ribs in and try to smush your floating ribs into your back. So if you had a strap back there, you could pull it and it wouldn't come out because the floating ribs are pulling in. Okay, push the butt back. Now stretch your arms forward like a zombie. Suck the shoulders back. Keep the ribs pushing into the wall. We're only going to stretch the arms as much as we can up until we feel the ribs wanting to come away. If you can release some of the tension in the rest of the body. So I consider my shoulders pretty open, but I can't touch the wall doing this with pure shoulder flexion. So now straighten your arms and I'll bend in the elbows and kind of look and notice where your arms are. So in down dog and handstands, when you stretch your arms up in a lunge, if you're trying to build your shoulder flexion and not strengthen your ability to collapse in your ribs, this is where your arms should be. If they go more back, then you're losing the shoulder flexion. Same with the head. A lot of times in down dog or in handstand, we'll look up at the hands, but again, then we're just doing it on our neck. Okay, bring the hands back down. I'm gonna do it again, ribs in. And now bring your arms forward, shoulders in, shoulders back. Now start to open your arms wide. Keep pushing your ribs in to the wall. So wide, you can open the arms, squeeze the shoulders back, pull those ribs in. Now turn the palms down. So again, like in down dog, this is kind of this, or not like warrior two or something. This is the feeling we want to go for. Okay, let's give that a try. So come back to your mat. In table position, imagine your back was against the wall, pull the floating ribs in and push the butt into the imaginary wall and integrate the shoulders. Tuck the toes, begin to move your hips back, but you're gonna stop when your head isn't about in that alignment that you had at the wall. So head slightly forward of the shoulders properly, chin slightly looking down so you're not looking forward. Spine is, chin is slightly tucked. Now pull the core in, push through the hands. Widen your hands and feet a little bit. And then we're gonna surf. So with the arms engaged, push the right hand away from you, push the body a little bit to the left. Shoulder will come a little bit out of the socket. Uh, come back to your center. Push the left arm towards the left. Body will go towards the right. Feel that stretch through the arm. One more time each direction. To the right. To the left. Back through center. Right, inhale. Stretch your right leg up to the sky. Core in. Arms in their true flexion. Step your right foot forward between your hands. Come up, to, up onto your fingertips. Pause. And then begin to push your feet down into the floor until you feel an engagement through the body. Take your hands to your hips and then come all the way up. Ribs in, shoulders back. And then begin to stretch your arms up. Letting your body dictate how far you go. Notice if your tendency is to want to look up with your head. Imagine you're squeezing that seasonal fruit. We'll go the pomegranate between chin and chest. 
Turn your palms forward to the front of the room and then open your arms up to the side or stay in. If you keep the ribs in and the sternum in, you stretch out, you might feel similarly that nerve flossing. Bring the arms forward, stretch them up, and out. Forward, up, out. Forward, hinge forward, plant your hands down and facing God. Nice. More weight into the front of the hands. Yes. Shoulders lifting up. Chin slightly tucked. Yes. Inhale, left leg up to the sky. Exhale, step the left foot forward between your hands. Notice that this is where you want your legs or if you want to widen them, shorten your stance. And begin to push down through the front foot and back foot. See if that pushing down, you can lift up your hands. Look more on no hands and hands to the hips. Come all the way up. Now ribs in, shoulders back, arms forward. Stretch your arms up, find your shoulder flexion. Notice if you're adding any internal pressure to yourself and see if you can release that a little. Open the arms up to the side. Arms forward. Up. Palms face forward. Pinky fingers lead the way down. Forward. Shoulders back. Up. Wide. Forward. Hinge down, plant your hands. Step back down and facing back. Bike out the legs. And then notice as you bike, it will help you kind of forget some of this alignment maybe and you might return more to your habits. And then with curiosity, isn't that interesting? And then seeing if you can add some of this internal support to yourself, which is different than pressure. Okay, inhale, come forward to plank, top of the push up, knees down, uh -huh. plank pose. The pulleys we love to collapse. Ribs like to lead the way down, or the head likes to hang down. So imagine the ceiling lowers to our back. So you can push your butt up into the ceiling, pull the back of the ribs up into the ceiling, Pull the shoulders up into the ceiling and then pull the throat into the ceiling. Try to keep all of that pulling back. Push down through the hands and the knees and then bend the elbows just a little bit. Can you keep this engagement? And then come all the way down to your belly. Awesome. Take your hands up to the side, thumbs down. Head can release down. Push into your fingertips and try to drag your thumbs towards each other. Also pull your fingertips towards each other so the knuckles are lifted. They're not bowing backwards like a smiley face. And then look towards your belly button so your belly will start to lift and you'll pull your ribs in. Then lift your chin forward. And like a turtle trying to retreat into its shell, pull your head back. And back. Shoulders back, ribs in. Now we're gonna drop one shoulder to the floor. So I'm gonna take my right shoulder down. This is gonna create space in the back of the body. Come back up. So again, we're moving with resistance. Do one more round. Come on back. Pull the fingers back and then lower down as you keep pulling yourself forward. Forehead rests on the hands. Bend your knees, windshield wiper the legs. Core in to protect that most mobile place in the, where the thoracic spine meets the lumbar, about rib level. And then plant your hands, 
push back, downward facing dog. Hands push down and pull back isometrically. That's one way to keep the shoulders lifted. Shoulders push out away from each other. And then head not looking forward. Yeah. Mom and Lauren, drop your heads a little bit. Yeah. Okay, inhale, right leg up to the spine. Bend your right knee. Imagine you're trying to squeeze a pencil right there. Really firmly squeeze um, that knee pit together and then circle out your knee. Core in. And tracking, take the circle in the other direction. What comes up for you? How interesting, watching it like a movie. Okay, one of these times, step your right foot all the way forward between your hands. Lower your left knee down to the floor. And we're gonna come up to this upright low lunge. This upright low lunge is gonna help us collapse less in our body. Oh, ribs in, shoulders back. Now we're gonna hold on to opposite shoulders. This is called a car, so it's a controlled articulate rotation. We're trying to just do this in the thoracic spine. So keeping the core engaged, we're gonna do a circle with the upper body. Don't let this be too much of a back bend. Resist it with your core. Keep your knee right over your ankle, try not to let it tip in. Take it in the other direction. Push down through the knee that's on the floor. <laughs> Here we come back through center, arms forward, stretch up. Squeeze your left glute, push down through the left knee. Also open the arms, shoulders back, core in, head back, and then we're gonna rotate with the core strong towards the right. Right hand's gonna come to the back of the right hip, stretch the left arm up, get long, long, long. This is more about length in the back bend. And then stretch your left arm forward, fingertips to the floor. Lift up the left knee. And then turn your right chest towards the right. Okay. So this is a place where we'll, we like to do it with the ribs. So pull the ribs in. We're going to take your hand further forward. So it's not behind your shoulder. <laughs> ribs in, shoulders back, and then stretch that top, your top bar up. Find your resistance with your core strength, and then push back into it. Chin slightly tucks, lengthening through the back of the neck. Pivot both of your feet to the left. Bend into the left knee, left foot stays flat on the floor. Left hand comes to the floor, turn up to the right. My left knee is still bent. And then circle the right wrist. Let your left ear fall to your left shoulder. Not using weight to the, with the strength of your little neck muscles to hold up your head. Take it in the other direction. Really nice release. Pivot forward, high runner's lunge. Okay, fingertips frame the front foot. This would be a place for blocks if you want. Exhale, push your front leg straight. Inhale, bend your front knee over your ankle. Exhale, push your front leg straight. Inhale, bend. Straighten. Notice if your tendency is to round a lot here, maybe use blocks. Or if your tendency is to back bend in your ribs, keep them in. And now we're gonna bend the back knee to the floor again. And we're gonna do this with a flop. So I'm gonna put my, push my right foot into the floor and drag the right foot back so the hamstrings engaged. Push through the front of the right foot with the engagement of the hamstrings. So right foot's pushing down and back. I'm gonna pull my sit bones back, inner spiral, if you know that terminology, 
back towards Hanumanasana. Don't let the knees straighten. Keep the front of the foot on the floor. Release back to your center. Re-engage with the engagement. Pull the booty back. Inner groins back. Come back to center. Engage. Pull. Come forward. Engage. This time as you pull back, let the right foot flex up off the floor. And let's keep doing this. Creating a resistance as you drag back. Not letting the knee straighten all the way. All right, the next time you come forward, or as you start to go back, turn your pinky toe a little bit to the right. So you're dragging your butt a little bit more to the left. You're going a little bit at an angle, pulling back, being more the lateral side of the hamstring, abductors. Really nice. Now plant your hands, step back, downward facing down. Core and shoulders and shoulder flexion. Bend your knees and begin to bounce a little bit, but without your toes leaving the floor. Try to get the flesh of your quads and your hamstrings and your booty to wiggle. Mobilizing the muscles, the connective tissue. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. And then inhale, left leg up to the sky. Bend the left knee, squeeze tight, circle out the joint. Circle in the other direction. And work that foot all the way forward between your hands. Right knee comes down to the floor or a cushion. Come on up right. Core in, shoulders back, cross your arms. Uh, you might notice if you just cross your arms normally, you could cross in the other direction. Doesn't really matter. Now squeeze your bum of your right knee and push down into the floor. Core in. A little circle into the cervical vertebrae, the thoracic vertebrae. Take it in the other direction. When you find a spot that feels really juicy, there's a few spots where I feel like a fantastic stretch to the front of my leg. I'm gonna like hang out there for a bit. How fascinating the body is, all connected. Uh, I've been making your way back through center. Keep the strength, your self support. Arms forward, suck the shoulders back. You can take some arms up. Watch them, notice how far they go back. You can stretch the arms up. Now we're gonna turn up the spine towards the left. Left hand's gonna come to the back of the hip. Stretch the right arm up. Push down through right knee, reach up through right pinky finger. And then stretch the right fingertips forward or to the floor. I try to avoid my hand being directly under my shoulder. I like to take it quite a bit forward and quite a bit over. So I'm not putting too much weight on my wrist. Lift up the back knee, you can also use a block. Hand to the hip, rotate a little bit. And your rotation pause. You can even work your left hand up your back a little bit, so the back of your left thumb might be more on the back of the ribs, and then pull the ribs in. Another way you can do that is to look towards the belly button. Keep the ribs drawing in. You can lift your head in, turn it to neutral, and then stretch the top arm up. Not worrying about how far or not far you are in this pose, but instead, being really connected to the sensations inside the body. We're gonna unwind, 
Pivot the feet to the right, bend into the right knee. Both of the feet stay flat on the floor. Right hand comes to the floor, fingertips or palm. Turn up to the left, left arm reaches up, circle the wrist. Allow your head to dangle. So your, these muscles we're trying to stretch out, release tension in. When we hold the neck opposing gravity, it tends to tense all those back up. I'll circle in the other direction. All right, unwind. Come back to your high runner's lunge. Front knee over ankle. Checking the spine. If it's rounding, use blocks, raise the floor. If it's smiling, pull the core in. Push the leg straight. In bend. Continuing this on your own. And if it doesn't feel like you have some strength in the left hamstring, practice pushing the left foot more firmly into the floor. So we're not just moving our body in space without muscular engagement. We're strong with that strength for moving. Okay, let's take it to the floor. Um, back knee's gonna come down, right knee's gonna come down. So we're gonna do this floss between our low lunge and our hamstring. These first few ones, we're gonna keep the front of the left foot pushing down into the floor. This will help open the front of the foot. Drag left, push left foot down, drag it back. Right knee pushes down, drags forward. And then sitting bones draw backwards. We're trying to draw backwards, come forward. And then you can begin to let the foot lift up. Maybe your butt moves closer to your heel, but do not let your front leg go all the way straight. We're trying to work on more of the belly of the muscle than at the joints. Moving the pinky toe out a little bit, doing the diagonal. You can bring your awareness to the muscle, all of the connection of the muscle, all of the way back. We're practicing this ability to track what's going on inside of ourselves, to really feel. One of the ways we learn to survive as humans is to feel less in our body and to think more. Okay. Really nice, come back to your center. Lift up your back knee. Step forward, eight to Masana. In your forward fold, bend one knee. Let's bend our left knee. Tiny bend in the right knee, so it doesn't hyperextend. And then push down more through the right heel. Bring the left hand to the floor and then turn up to the right. Right arm stretches up. Again, let your head hang. Try to find more of a stretch in the back of your right leg. So little movements or adjustments you can do to find a little bit more of a stretch. And come back to your forward fold, switch your legs. Left knee, little bend in the knee as you push down firmly through the left heel. Right hand stays on the floor. Push down through the right hand, left one up. Head dangles, rotate. Really nice, come back down, forward fold. Interlace your hands. We're gonna round up with that weird resistance thing we did in the beginning, this flossing half sun salutation. So we're rounding up, we're pushing through the heels. So we're rounding through our spine one vertebrae at a time. Pull your hands in one direction, pull the ribs out in the other. If you're a rib sticker out or try to pull your ribs in a ton here. Nice, release arms down, shoulders are close, and send it out. 
We'll do a quad stretch on our right foot. So shifting the weight to the right foot, push down, push down, push down, push down, push down so much. Left foot, knee up. Before we do the quad stretch, play with your stability. Both of your hands to your hips. See if you can rotate your hips forward and back a little bit, like cat cow, and then find your neutral. Now go up, hands on the ribs. Don't let the pelvis change. Do a little cat cow on the ribs. Oh, I'm probably to be very small. Keep the ribs parallel over the hips. Now imagine you're doing it with your shoulders. Shoulders forward and back. Keep the shoulders parallel. Now your head stacking everything. Okay. Now reach forward with your left hand, knee up, slide the left hand down the front of the left shin. Lump the knee down to the floor. Notice that as the knee goes down, the ribs come out. Keep pushing through the right foot, squeeze your left glute and try to push your left knee down to the ground. Little bend in your left elbow, shoulders up and back. Maybe right arm forward. True shoulder flexion. Well, after we use those muscles after they're like, oh, so strong. If we don't move them again, then we get like glued like that. This collagen inside our body lays down every 20 minutes and we want it to move and glide. We don't want it to be restricted and change the way our body moves. Second side, push down to your left foot. Keep pushing down. And some movement. Test your balance, maybe come close to a wall so you feel a little bit safer and do better alignment when you feel like you won't fall over. Keep the knee up, hands on the hips. Align the hips. As the hips are aligned, notice if you're doing that movement from with a hyperextended standing knee. Hands on the ribs. Shoulders. Head. Right hand comes to the knee, right hand slides down the ankle, point the knee down to the floor. Draw the right shoulder up and back. What would be the most supportive thoughts you could have right now? Maybe stretch the arm up. Really nice, arm yeah, release. Shake it out. We take your hands to your quads and mobilize them. Get your glutes to move. <laughs> Inhale, stretch the arms forward and up. Core stays strong. Exhale, forward fold. Ribs stay in. Inhale, hands to the thighs, halfway up. Don't look forward, chin towards the chest, ears, shoulders, ribs, hips in one line. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to plank, top of a push up. So knees down, hips back, core in, shoulders back, throat back. Keep that, bend your elbows. Maybe just a little bit, we're gonna push back up, push back up. Like keep your support. Don't pressure yourself to do too big of a bend in the elbows. Push it back up. This time we're going to come all the way down. Strong legs. Push into your hands. Drive them back. And then pull, pull, pull yourself forward and up. Squeeze your glutes. Push through your toes. Look over your right shoulder. Left shoulder back. Cover your left shoulder, right shoulder back. Come back through center. Pull yourself forward as you lower down there. Awesome. Press back up. Push us a little break on our arms. We'll do a little bit of knee balance work. I like to use a cushion. When we stand on our knees, we remove our ankle and our knee is possible collapses. Push down through your knee. Push, push, push. And maybe left knee lifts. 
Maybe it stays back here. Maybe it starts to come forward. <laughs> I'm gonna follow my arms, they do weird things. <laughs> but finding this press. Awesome. Take your left foot forward. Bring your hands to the floor, walk straight in both of your legs. <laughs> Push into the left foot and then slide up all the way back. Bring it forward. Okay, now that's the isometric move. So push it down and without letting the foot move, try to slide it back. Turn the outer right hip forward, belly engaged. If your spine is rounding, use blocks. Go okay. ahead. Yeah. Well, it's the booty, the booty round. No yeah. round right at the sacrum lumbar. So that's because the sit, that, that means the sit bones are facing down. So you'll be less in your hamstring when we do this next thing. Okay, now we're going to come onto the ball of the back foot, the right foot. Left foot dragging back powerfully. Now bend into your back knee. Try to keep pulling the right foot back. And then we'll come release, come forward. Re-engage, bend into the back knee. Ooh, got some muscles jumping for joy. Yeah. Come back up. As you do this, maybe even the back foot kind of like bounces up. Maybe you drag your butt back at little angles. Try to change where you get that stretch in your hammies. You get some adductors, lateral stuff. And we're going to start to do this towards the left. So my right foot's going to move a little bit to the left. And I'm going to do at least two there. Now it's going to move to the left again. Keep pulling the foot back. Oh, I feel that all the way down my to the anterior, that shin muscle that comes down on the lateral side. Move it a little bit more. See, see how far you can get your foot. Not to the side. <laughs> if you fall, you know you made it. <laughs> okay, now we're going to come into half noon. Push through the right foot or the left foot. Left hand to the floor of the block, right hand to the hip. Open up. Core in. Support yourself. Shoulders back. Maybe the hand stays on the hip or stretch up. Try to push the hands backwards, but against your own resistance. And then step forward, Uttanasana. Awesome. Widen the feet. If you're gonna do Malasana squat, heels can lift. Mini break, probably on the other side. <laughs> uh, and we're gonna walk our hands or self back to plank. You can skip this plank. You could do meditation or child's pose. I'm gonna do knees up for this one. Try to keep booty up, core in, shoulders in, throat back, bend a little bit and pause. All the way down. Inhale, curl cobra. Look towards your belly for a second. Keep the ribs that much in. Look straight forward, top of your mouth parallel to the floor, and then retract your head. As the head goes back, you'll probably notice your heart go forward. Press back down. Or let's press back onto our knees. Kneeling. Maybe use your cushion. Okay. Shift your body over towards the left. Left hand could be on the left hip, and you might feel the head of the left femur bone go out a little bit. Now, as you push down through the left knee, if you're pushing the head of the left femur bone, so make hips lay back into the hip. Get the right leg lifting. I have to brag about how good I am at this because I can stand for so long. This is how I <laughs> this is how I did it. <laughs> okay, set the foot forward. We're gonna do that parzo tanasana floss. So hands to the floor. Both legs straight. Take your hand back to your right sitting bone. See if you can locate it. 
like little handhold fingers almost in the crack, you guys. <laughs> Drag it up, 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 up. Don't let the front knee bend. Okay, keep that hands to the floor. Drag the right foot back. And then we'll begin to squat into the back knee, ball of the back foot. Not letting that front leg hyperextend more and come up. Take your thumb right below your knee. Push your chin into your thumb. Right there, don't lose that little bend. Okay, we're gonna start to go towards the right. We're moving in small little chunks and we're doing two pulses at each chunk. Resisting with the right foot, pulling back. Using the awareness and mindfulness to feel the stretch on the right leg. Maybe tracking internally thoughts that might be coming up, emotions that might be coming up. Imagine you're watching a movie. How interesting. Ooh. That foot drawing back is going to be what protects the knee. Okay, now we're going into half moon. Push up on the right leg, right fingertips, left hand on your head. Maybe open the arm. I'm going to lay nice. Step down. Forward fold. Bend your knees to the foot. I'm going to see on the bum. Let's do a little check in. Some good meditation. We still have like 15 minutes. The last one we're ending now. Eyes open, take your hands behind you, bring your feet in front of you. Hands are gonna be flat on the floor. This is another flop, so I'm pushing my hands like that, but I'm not gonna let the elbows or my hands move. Elbows are bent, so my biceps are engaged and my pecs are engaged. My heart's gonna sink in a little bit. And with that engagement, I'm gonna push my heart up to the sky. Release, re-engage, pump up, release. Maybe you want to pump a little bit more in one direction, other direction. I'm trying to keep the ribs in so the pump's coming more from the chest and the rib cage. Really nice and then release all the way onto your back. Knees can flow out or not down. Okay, knees back up, soles of the feet on the floor. We're gonna do some bridges. Arms. Bent 90 degrees, elbows down, shoulders pull back, head pushes down, core is engaged, push into your hips, lift up. Engaging through the front of the body as you try to push the front body open. Roll over towards your right. Maybe spin yourself so you can look towards the me. I'm resting my hand, head on my hand. You could also put your head on your arm or on your block. I'm gonna do another quad stretch. Pull the left knee in, fold underneath the knee, slide the hand down to the foot, 
Keep that elbow bent as you stretch the knee back. Core in, so I could let my knee go much further back and not feel a stretch if my core is not engaged. Squeeze the top glute, push up through the knee. Right, now we're gonna take the foot up. If you want, you can see if you can hold your hand the whole time, which is kind of fun. Go ahead, in order to do a hamstring floss, so my, again, surprise, surprise. The heel is gonna be pulling down towards the glute, and then I'm gonna use my hand on my leg to try to straighten it. Really, it's like it pulls in. Try to straighten it, move back. You can put your hand under your calf or spine. So many ways you can do this. You don't have to hold your foot. I'm trying to get that resist. Resist. Now we're gonna hold it straight. Push out through the foot. All right, release that leg. We're gonna push up We're on this modified wild thing. First, we're gonna let ourselves hang. Let your shoulder come towards your ear and hang the right side of the waist down. Now push into the hand, shoulder pushes away from the ear. Push up through the hips. So I like to move my bottom knee back a smidge when I do that and lift up. Shoulder back, core in, and then try to rotate towards the spine. I like to keep my hand on my rib often to try to curl open. Maybe hand comes behind the head, that can feel really yummy too. Comes behind the head, you can almost traction the nape of the neck away from the spine. Come on now. Sit down for a moment. We're going to sit in a way so we can work this bottom leg and we're gonna use our thumbs and we're gonna keep the arms straight so we're not doing it with our elbows and our strength. Arms are straight, we're gonna kind of lean. Rock back, push and lean. When I rock back, my knee lifts, when I push, I try to get my knee down. Push and go back down. And the meridian system, they say you have these three lines, which are kind of like Ida, Pingala, and Shoshuna, masculine, feminine, central. Nice, you can keep doing it with your thumbs, or you can lean back and use your heel. Pushing your heel either straight down, you can push into the calf, so finding like where is it more tight. Right in the middle is where you have your soleus and your gastroc. So it's the tightest spot on me. Up rotation. Now turn that foot up, right? You're gonna take your thumbs and you're pushing your thumbs forward and up, forward and up. So right in the back of that calf, thumbs are gonna push into your calf, find the pressure of your calf muscle and then drag up. Again, try to rock, lean forward, rock, lean forward, press, rock, forward, press, rock. Now I'm moving around on your calf. Nice. And I like right underneath the knee, so just below the knee right there. That could be a nice spot to push into. Drag up. Okay, I'm gonna do the second side, laying down on your opposite side, getting up to my left side. I'm using a block, starting with that quad stretch. Ribs in, try to take the back bend out of your sacrum low back. Push out through the knee, toes active. Okay. 
We're gonna move the foot up, resisting the leg down. Or pull it up. We don't want muscles that are just flexible. We don't want muscles that are just really strong. We want muscles that can be strong and flexible, mobile. Okay, keep the leg in extension. Integrate the shoulders. Integrate the core. Push out, foot into hand, whatever you're holding. Bringing the Awareness inside, again, like what are you thinking? What are you internally located at? Now release the foot. Use your hands to press yourself up. My left shin is parallel with the short end of my foot, my mat right foot in front of the left. Left hand's gonna go down forward of my shoulder and then I'm gonna lean towards my shoulder. Lengthening from the hip to the armpit. Avoid hyperextending in that elbow. Pulling the ribs, like more space in the ribs there. And I know I'm gonna push the hand down and away. Shoulder's gonna move away from the ear. Shoulder's gonna draw back kind of like that floss we did in the block the beginning. Hand on the hip, lift up, maybe widen the knee or adjust the legs. Pull the ribs in. Maybe look towards your belly button, core in, or maybe hand behind the head, push the head back, keep the core in. All right, guys, and then come to sit down. Other leg forward, mine's my left, arm straight, rocking. Staying with your thumb presses or leaning back and using your heel. Fingers integrate. Great, tip that leg up. Use your thumbs. Push in, try to grip the muscle with your thumbs and then pull it up. Uh, both legs forward, shake them out again, take the quads, relax your kneecaps with your hands on your knees, just circle your kneecaps, circle the kneecaps in the opposite direction, hold or snap your booty. Let's pull in, snap your tummy. Ribs, ribs are in, ribs, up the sternum, thymus gland, chest, uh, shoulders, arms, head, face. I'm kind of like you just like shook up a mat, like a 
a rug and now it's all dusty and you're like, <laughs> dust be gone. <sighs> and you can either end up right in a seated meditation for our final little bit of the stillness where you could lay down on your back for a brief shavasana. Sometimes in Shavasana or meditation, there can be this like deep absorption into like silent darkness. More often than not, for me, it's sitting and then watching all of this internal stuff arise. I try to just be able to watch it like a movie. How interesting. No judgment. Not doubling down on yourself. Another thing you can do here if that is also feeling uncomfortable in this moment is notice the senses. Letting the senses keep you present. Maybe imagining yourself like an Insta pot builds up pressure real quick. I just notice this pressure you feel from the external world, this pressure you might be also putting on yourself and imagining that in this little part of our practice we're doing that you hit the release valve and allowing some of that pressure or steam to leave. Based on what you've been observing in this class, pick an intention today for just like a feeling you'd like to feel more of, an inner state feeling, so not like a behavior, something you want to do or accomplish, but more of this in inner state. Maybe calm, grateful. And imagine if your inhales, you can pull that feeling more into your body. Maybe imagining what would it feel like if you had this state more often? Would you hold your face different, your posture different? Would things sound different? Would they look different? If you're laying on your back, we're going to come up into a seated meditation, seeing if you can stay connected to this embodied experience. Bring your hands up to your heart. Thank yourself for showing up. The hardest part. 
Thanks for all letting me be a part of your practice today. It's been so great to be in community with all of you. I hope your day goes well. Namaste. Maybe that you can track your internal experience as your day goes, however it goes. <laughs> Let's take off the pressure that it will go well. <laughs> that was tough. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I know that was hard. <laughs> <laughs>